I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my life living in my own Nicaragua. Today, I got a question from one of you of my viewers who was interested and is seriously looking at moving to Nicaragua. And he had a lot of questions, but one of them stood out to me. And I want to address this. I think it's a great topic. And he asked this question of me. Do I feel that Nicaragua as a country actually wants us, the expats, and presumably the group of expats that he's speaking of, which is essentially North Americans and Europeans, do they actually want us here? And more specifically, do I personally feel that I have been welcomed uh, at, a, at a large level, at a, at a high level, have I felt welcomed here in Nicaragua? So we're gonna cover that right after the bump. It may seem like an obvious question, and a lot of people definitely ask this, but I've never had it asked quite so directly before. But it's reasonable to ask, you know, why would a country like Nicaragua be welcoming? Why would they be interested in having a group of people from a different region of the world come and move there? That doesn't mean that they're going to stop people from moving there, but there's a difference between allowing and encouraging or really wanting. And so it, this is a great question. I wanna, I wanna really dig into this because I think this is something that people um, may have in the back of their minds and aren't aware that they really need to ask or really need to think about. So before we get into more esoteric ideas about this, I wanna start with some concrete legal things because this really, I think, answers most of the questions. It's gonna give us a foundation, a framework for the rest of the, of the discussion. When we're looking at any country and uh, whether they want to encourage, and we're specifically talking not about tourism, but you can use these rules kind of broadly to think about tourism as well. But when we're talking about expats, that is encouraging immigrants to move into the country and, and, and make it a home, whether temporarily or in the term of expats, generally we assume permanently. Immigrant can be much more broad where you're assuming a migratory in and out, maybe just for a little period of time. Expats tends to imply an intention for it to be permanent, but of course nothing is necessarily permanent. You don't know that that's the case. And sometimes we call people expats when they are just uh, transient. So we don't always use those terms really strictly, but in general, immigrants into their country. Most countries are going to encourage some degree of immigration because immigration in general is positive for a country. This depends on your country, its current situation, where your immigrants are coming from and so forth. And different countries have different groups of immigrants that make sense for them. Some need uh, physical laborers, some need knowledge workers, some need investors. Everybody has different needs and so different countries prioritize different things. But what's really important is any given country if you take what their needs are and you take what their opinions are, right, this is very important because na uh, nationalities, right, countries have kind of national opinions on things, at least at the government level, that, that really dictate how that government is going to behave, how it's going to think about things. Uh, and you take those opinions and you combine it with the needs that the country has, and they're going to formulate laws or policies or actions that are going to, they hope, create the situations that they're looking for. Now, sometimes those things backfire, right? Not, people aren't perfect. Just because you make a law doesn't mean it's gonna be followed. Just because you make a law, it may not do the thing you think it's going to do, but you can generally read into a situation and say, okay, you can tell from what's done here what it, the intention is, right? So if you're, if you're looking at a country, and we're gonna use Nicaragua now as the example, Nicaragua makes it outrageously easy, easier than any other country that I know of, not just for tourism, but for the residency process, for the permanent resident process, not the permanent residency visa, but the ability to move into the country and not leave. This could be the beginning of a multi-staged paperwork process over a large number of years. We're not worried about specific visas. We're not talking about a specific residency choice. What we're talking about is the ability for you, presumably as a North American, a European, a viewer of this show, your ability to come to Nicaragua today, tomorrow, with the intent, the hope of making it your future home. I know of no country on earth that makes it easier for that group of people to come to a country and not leave, to make it their home. The least amount of effort up front, 
the least amount of effort long term, the least amount of worry that it's going to happen, the least amount of requirements. Yeah, individual little tiny pieces you may find different places that are more encouraging. But Nicaragua, from a legal framework standpoint, if you read their laws and policies from a view of now, I'm going to read it the other direction, right? Instead of the dictation of this is what the law is, now we're going to look from the law the other way and say what is the intent based on the, what the law is. And if you look from the law back towards the intent, it is very clear that Nicaragua's laws have been written, the current ones and the current situation are written for the intent of encouraging and attracting immigration into the country on a very large scale, especially from places like North America, Europe, and obviously, I hope, uh, more of Latin America, because of course, their own region, there, there tends to be a lot of affinity, and they want to make it really easy for people who live in the region to move around. The region is very good for that. That's kind of separate. So yes, Latin American immigration is very fluid, but also North American, incredibly welcome to come here. European, incredibly welcome to come here to a slightly lesser degree, you know, uh, uh, the the southern Pacific, like Australia, New Zealand, um, but there's there's options for nearly everywhere in the world is going to have an option to move here. Some places have it very difficult, mostly because they're small countries, not because Nicaragua doesn't want them, but it's just very difficult uh, to make that happen. Nicaragua is a small country. Some other small countries, when you're a small country, you run into this small country problem where small countries have a hard time dealing with each other, whereas North America and Europe even there, though there are multiple countries in those regions, have large agreements across large spaces, and it makes it easier for small countries in those regions to act like a bigger power. And Central America does this slightly with the CA4, but it has a minimal effect in this particular purpose. If we're looking at the policies that Nicaragua is putting forth, Nicaragua is going to an extreme degree to make it undeniable that it is the policy and the opinion of the nation that expats, that immigrants from North America and Europe specifically, and many other broad regions, are not just allowed to come. They're not just welcome to come. They are bend over backwards requested to come. This is the target audience. This is the, we really feel as a country that we just really, really think these groups have a lot of affinity that makes sense for us for whatever reason. And of course, some of it is, you know, connections to Spain. The, a lot of the region was once the same country, right? And Canada is not, but half of the United States is not quite true, but large swaths like California and Texas, that not that long ago was the same country as Nicaragua. Those regions got their freedom from Spain on the same day. We all have the same Independence Day eight, in 1821 when we all were free of Spain and, and we're all Mexico at one point. So there's this really strong affinity through, you know, ex with the exception of Canada, U.S., Mexico, all the Central American countries and, and Costa Rica, like we're all not that long, really recently in this together so that there that there is this in incredible open like oh we people from this region need to be able to move around is super obvious and of course spain just one day before that this was part of spain and spain was connected to the holy roman empire and that's most of the eu right so it's really easy to see from a historic perspective that nicaragua on this side and places like spain uh, on the other side they have this bi-directional affinity that makes it really obvious that there is expected to be, it doesn't guarantee anything, but there's an expectation that both sides are going to see the other as primary candidates for emigration and for immigration. So for example, here in Nicaragua, we expect that lots of people are gonna to wanna to go to Spain because it's kind of like the motherland in some ways from a colonial perspective. And Spain has a lot of people who want to come to Nicaragua because Nicaragua was a colony and the, the, the idea of the colonies hundreds of years ago, 500 years ago, was that these are places that people from the motherland wanted to go and have a kind of Spanish, but kind of adventurous, kind of new world thing, but with some amount of the old world still there, because you could always go beyond the colonies, right, and have a pure adventure thing. So, so this bi-directional thing is, is natural and expected. There's tight political ties throughout the region, even places that are uh, opposed or uh, a, a kind of um, unhappy with each other politically still share a tremendous amount of recent history and a tremendous amount of 
cultural affinity that that even really serious political differences uh, are not able to make go away. There are huge numbers and always has been of the same population groups and the same ideological groups moving throughout the region and recent borders that are that are truly honestly quite recent um, are, are not things that are really shaking that up and won't for hundreds of years yet. Uh, and so it's not surprising. But of all the countries in the region, nobody is making so much effort to make that so welcoming, to make it so much a target for attraction. Nicaragua has gone to the utmost to make digital nomads, permanent residency, and even tourism from, from all of its heavily affin uh, 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 high affinity regions of the world absolutely as, as frictionless to come and visit, to decide to stay, and to have a long-term indefinite plan where you don't have to worry about having to leave. So reading back, taking that approach, even before we get into what is the experiences on the ground, just looking at what the policies are and comparing them to a Spain. As an American, I can go to Spain for 90 days, but staying above 90 days is nearly impossible. And, and going above like 180 is just crazy hard. As a Nicaraguan wanting to go to the United States, might as well be impossible. For uh, a Spaniard wanting to move to the United States, really, really hard. For uh, someone, you know, a Nicaraguan looking to move to Mexico, challenging. As a Canadian looking to move to the United States, surprisingly hard, right? But for any of those places to look at moving to Nicaragua, outrageously simple. So simple that you don't even have to ask. That is unique. You don't have to ask. You don't have to prepare. You, you literally, if you're from those regions, can get on a plane, and this is why we just had that video, just do it, just come down, because there aren't these barriers, and that's unique. People are sure that there's going to be barriers. Even places that are crazy welcoming, like, like Costa Rica or Guatemala, still have so many more barriers that people get confused about Nicaragua, and they're sure that, that well, there must be these barriers, right? And, what, like, and I just had this conversation with someone. They said, well, these things are so easy in Panama. I was considering Panama because these factors were so easy, and I said, yeah, but you still have those barriers. They might be easy to get over, really easy. Panama is very welcoming, but Nicaragua doesn't even have those barriers. So which is easier? Panama with it takes almost no effort or Nicaragua where the thing doesn't exist at all. Oh, oh, why was I considering Panama? I like Nicaragua. This is the person said, I, I, Nicaragua was my first choice, but I got confused because Panama added these, you know, difficult things to do, but then made them really easy and it made it feel easier but when you look at Nicaragua, nothing approaches it in ease of movement. And so because of that, we know beyond anything, nobody can come out and say, right? No, no government official can reasonably come out and say, no, I mean, I suppose the president, but no, no normal, like, like non, non absolutely authoritative government official, no newspaper, no foreign state department, no expat on the ground like me can ever make a statement that the country doesn't absolutely want you. They want you. They don't put up with you. A few of you <laughs> they put up with. But the majority of you, they are not just going to say, you may come. They're going to say, absolutely, we're so excited to see you. Welcome to paradise, right? Now, there's lots of reasons that this makes sense beyond the things we talked about, right? Lots of open space, depressed real estate market, uh, an economy that's really looking for ways uh, to create jobs. They do limit your ability to get jobs. So there's not 100% positive. There are things that could be seen as less than ideal. But all of those things create the situation that makes Nicaragua so desirous of the people they're targeting to, with their policies, with their laws, with their procedures, to make you feel as welcome as any country reasonably could. Now, of course, there's the official level, the rules, the laws, the policies, but of course, you also wanna know what is it like on the ground? How do you feel in person with the people that you meet and the businesses, the uh, government offices and such that you have to engage with and interact with when you live here in Nicaragua? And I can honestly say, having been here now uh, over a course of nine years and three years continuous uh, as our permanent home, of course, things are likely to change. When we were here nine years ago, we were much more transient. And so we had kind of a uh, experience. So first of all, nine years 
years ago, it was a very different country, um, and, and we were very transient. So while we did feel very welcome at that time, we also felt much more like tourists. While we did live here, and it was our only home, we didn't have another home that we were living in that we were visiting this one from, so th that made it that we were living here, but it was also known that it was going to be temporary. We had not made a permanent move, we had made a one of many uh, transient moves. So the opinion of people we interacted with was slightly different, and they would view us much more like they would view a tourist. And so we had one experience from that nine years ago, more like a tourist, and in Granada, uh, admittedly. In the interim, I visited uh, a few times and we're in different parts of the country, and now we've lived here. And, and when we moved three years ago, just for perspective, we knew we were moving permanently. We actually, and very foolishly, invested in property ahead of time. Yes, I made exactly the mistake that I tried to warn every one of you about, literally having this conversation with a friend whose mother decided to move to Costa Rica and is literally trying to buy a house as I'm recording this. And I'm like, seriously, you haven't watched any of my videos. Like, you know me personally and have known me for many years, knew me before I moved here was one of the people that was, I was with at work excitedly discussing how I was going to be moving to Nicaragua four years ago. And she was so interested in it and like, wow, what a, what a cool thing you're doing. I'm so interested in this. And for years has been talking about coming down to visit me. Didn't ask anything, didn't say anything. She's just a few hours away right now, could drive up, could get firsthand information on what it's like investing down here. Didn't even mention it to me. I saw a picture of them in Costa Rica and I'm like, are you serious? And she's like, well, I'm here with my mom. She's my property. I'm like, you didn't ask me anything like serious. Like, I can't believe it. Anyway. <laughs> So when we came down three years ago, it was very clear that we we were investing. Uh, it, it turned out by the time we got here, we were investing in businesses, we were investing in a home, investing in property, investing in moving our children, moving our dogs, moving uh, many of our possessions. We haven't moved all yet. Uh, the whole thing, everything we did was so we're all in. So we have a very different perspective. The reason this matters is that people view us at least as attempting to make this our permanent home. So we have a different perspective to Nicaraguans that we interact with now. And certainly at this point, having lived here as long as we have and being as, you know, we've continued to invest, we've continued uh, to buy property, we've continued to be very actively involved in the country and in our community, uh, the, the perspective of us as permanent or nearly permanent residents uh, who, who are members of the community uh, is, is well in place. And in all that time, regardless of what it, whether it was the perspective nine years ago or the perspective now, I can honestly say that it has been a very, very consistent, positive, welcoming uh, uh, feeling from the communities that we're in. I, I really venture to say I cannot remember a single individual who has ever given me the feeling that we weren't welcome here. Some people are just very disinterested in us. We're, you know, we're, we're expats. We're part of a different community. We're seen that way. We're seen as outsiders. That doesn't make it negative, but it does make it, well, maybe they're just not someone for them to hang out with, right? It's especially because there's such a high likelihood for anyone who's an immigrant here to be transient. Well, they say they're staying here for forever. They're going to be here for five years and they're going to move on because that's a very common thing. So people have an expectation of that. And even some of my really close friends here recently said to me, but yeah, but you're not here for forever. Like, when are you moving on? Like in a year, in five years, he was fine with it. Could be a long time. But he's like, you're not actually intending to stay, stay, right? And we're like, what, what are you talking about? Of course we're staying. You're like, what? what? How long have you known us? And that's your reaction. It was such a weird thing. But that's it's so ingrained that so many people, immigrants, come here, especially from North America, and, and, and may have an intention of staying a long time or say they're staying a long time and then do move on. Of course, traditionally, a lot of those people were here under very different conditions, uh, coming down to work for agencies that were you know, involved in one way or another, and those agencies are, are not here anymore. So a lot of people left because they saw it as a job or they saw it as a career. Uh, and we're here because we're seeing it as a home. And then our career, you know, it's, there's a difference between I moved to a place because my career took me there. And if then if there's a career change and you may be like, yeah, it's permanent, but then the career changes. And so you leave, but then there's other people now like us who came here because this is home. And then our career wraps around that. It's the career. That's the thing that gives now partially it's because I'm older, uh, partially because of the kind of career I have, it's able to do that. Uh, so it's, it's not purely that we're putting everything on the line for Nicaragua. We also have lives that enable us to make those choices fairly easily. But unlike a lot of people who have left in the past, we do not have that. Oh, my job changed. Therefore I'm out of here. Right. It's not, that's, it's not like that. So, uh, we have the intention for sure that this is home. 
And uh, so when people interact with us, um, that's something that they, they don't always understand. Uh, so there still is a bit of a, a standoffish, I don't know if I want to invest in getting to know people, we're just going to leave. So of course that exists, but that's not the same as not being welcoming. But of the people that we do interact with, like it is extreme how much we are invited into uh, the society, into, into the culture, into the events, right? We are asked to go places. Well, there's an there's a event going on downtown, let's go. Right. Oh, there's a religious festival. Let's go. There's a, you know, a family event. Come on over. Come to our house. Be a part of everything. That is a constant feeling that we have that we are we're actually invited in so much that as North Americans, it feels overwhelming because we're not used to doing that much. We're not used to being so social. And even as the outsiders who are clearly invited less often because we don't know as many people. We don't have as many connections. We don't have those like, oh, I'm so-and-so's cousin or I'm so-and-so's godfather. And so I have to, I have these obligations. We don't have those obligations and we're still this busy. I can't even imagine what it's like for Nicaraguenses, uh, but the, that we are constantly being welcomed into everything that's going on around us is, is incredible. We're much, I, this is, this is crazy to say. We are dramatically more invited into participating in the lives of our neighbors, uh, new friends that we have here, of, of people who just, you know, part of the community, whether it's out on the beach, whether it's here in the city, whether it's in the region, we are so much more welcomed into the fold than we ever were in, say, Texas, where we lived for 11 years. All those years in Texas, or the uh, not as many years, but we lived in Peekskill, New York, and no point in either of those places. And of course, neither place was like uninviting. Neither place was like, oh, you shouldn't have come here. No, of course not. So first of all, I'm from New York originally, and we lived in Texas for a long time. My daughter, one daughter's born in New York, one daughter's born in Texas. So we're like tied to these places. We have a big history with these places. Uh, lots of family in both places. So you shouldn't be standoffish in any way whatsoever. But in those places, they're so cold and impersonal. It never became a thing where we really felt like we were welcomed into the community. And, and I don't think anyone feels really welcomed into the community. The amount that you go and get to know your neighbors is very low. The amount that you go out and do community events is really low. Now, after a long time in Carrollton, Texas, where we lived, which is a great part of Texas, absolutely, we picked, I think, one of the best places. I don't regret where we went. I don't think it was a bad choice. I, in retrospect, I think we nailed it. We put a lot of work into, into picking, but I think we nailed it with that location. At Peekskill, not so much. That was kind of, it was okay, but it wasn't like a slam dunk. Carrollton was like a slam dunk. Uh, as far as the U.S. goes, as far as Texas goes. And after being there for many years, we started to know the right people. We started to know when events were. We would go out and do community events. And we started to get a little bit more of a connection. And partially because when we, the kids were old enough to go out and do things, we would like go do things with the library. We'd go do things with homeschool groups. We would go do things with, and just get us get us out. Now, of course, we we made some friends there, but mostly they were friends from work. Uh, and then and then we had a really big group of friends that we literally from the bar. and and But that took a long time to cultivate. And it was a very... Uh, a difficult group of friends to kind of create, and it took a long time, and it was very haphazard. Um, and, and it was very spread out, because it would be like, well, I, I met this friend, and they're from 20 minutes that way, and 30 minutes this way, and, and, and it was a very big area to put together a small group of friends. And here, after a much shorter amount of time in Leon, we have a much larger group of friends who all hang out with each other, who get together all the time, who are all relatively close, but in very different areas, but still there's just not that far between things. It's, it's such, such a different experience. I don't think very many people are going to come from North America. And, and of course, if you, you know, if you grew up in a place, you have like this, this group of friends, this social circle that you've created since you were small, most likely. And, and that's going to make a, well, okay, I've got this, this really tight knit circle that I may be leaving, uh, at least physically. Okay. That's one extreme. But if you've moved around any, the chances are that you're just, you don't have these big social circles, the way that humans really thrive with, and you probably are, are missing some amount of connections that would be uh, on the healthy side. You're probably on the lean. Like most people are. We certainly were in Texas. We didn't have nearly enough friends in Texas. We had some really great friends, you know, we still have some really great friends in Texas, but the number of them just isn't that big. It may seem like 
because we had lived in New York with basically no friends for a while, that moving to Texas over that long period of time, we were able to cultivate some pretty close relationships. But it took a long time and not very many. And here in Nicaragua, I feel that we have a larger set of friends and lo lesser amount of time and very close and much more like family than than like, OK, we have some friends like I have some friends from Texas that are very much like family, but the number is really small. And here the number is quite large. And the amount like I was just at, uh, uh, you know, a, an event for families in Managua. And like, I'm, I'm tr like we're getting involved in things here and so connected with the people uh, that we've met and become friends with. It is such a different thing. So to answer your question very succinctly, the amount that we feel welcomed by the country, welcomed by the uh, offices and official responses of the country, by the businesses and people that we interact with at arm's length and by our, our close community of friends or people who become friends here. I feel that and, and even the expat community is incredibly welcoming. We have so many friends from the expat community as well, who also all of them tend to have a lot of, you know, integration into society because we're not in an enclave area. So all the people generally that are expats here are here because they like Nicaragua and they want to be a part of Nicaragua and they they also like the other expats and, and of course we gravitate towards each other to some degree for logical reasons and so we all have our Nicaraguan circles that we run in but the expats know each other because of course we have the shared experience to quite some degree and many of us moved within a relatively reason reasonable amount of time from each other and a lot of us are very close in age and so there's a lot of reasons why um, and, and uh, many don't speak Spanish so uh, for those who don't speak Spanish, it's a really important outlet to just be able to talk. <laughs> but uh, for those of us who do speak Spanish, it's still nice to have a break sometimes and speak English. And those of us who do speak Spanish are often a resource for those who don't, uh, for obvious reasons. But the just the the unbelievable amount of welcoming that we do feel on a personal level, on the level of all the people that I know, um, it's yeah, you're wanted here. Maybe not as an absolute individual, right? Every single person is going to have a different experience and someone's going to have a, and of course your reaction will be play into this. There's gonna be people who are like, I just never made friends. I never got to know anyone. I didn't feel like I belonged. That can happen. That can happen anywhere. New York, Texas, Nicaragua. Of course it's gonna to happen to somebody. And for someone that's not a right fit. And in some cases it's you, not that you're not a nice person, but maybe you're just not a fit for the people around you. And I know someone who moved just over here and he made it like three weeks, never made a friend, never went out and, and grew a social circle. And of course, three weeks is not giving it very much time. They don't have enough time to like strike up a conversation or, you know, learn the language at all and wasn't taking an effort to learn the language, figured he'd just get by without it or what little tiny bit he had. Like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. But especially if, you know, you're okay talking to expats or uh, you're working on it. But if your plan is just, I'm just not gonna learn Spanish ever and you're young and like you have this long period of time that you plan and you, you need to build a social circle, that's gonna be tough, right? <laughs> whether, it's, whether it's you wanna go to the bar and just be able to meet people or you wanna be able to go to restaurants and just strike up conversations with random people that you see, whatever, having some amount of language skills or people who have those language skills for you that can proxy for you is gonna help a lot. Uh, but it's, it's just, uh, it, everyone's experience will be different. But, the majority, especially if you're you're coming with the intent of of some amount of integration, not necessarily integration, but becoming a member of society, you could totally be the the reclusive, quirky gringo who's not like anyone else and does not do the normal things. But if you're friendly and want to be, you know, a positive impact on society, that's cool. You may not integrate at all, but that's okay. But most of us want some amount of integration. We want to kind of feel like this is our culture, kind of feel like this is our home. Uh, the more that you have this, like, I'm here because I love it. I'm here because I want to, I want to hang out. I want to make friends. I want to be a part of society, even if I'm, whether I'm integrated or just that quirky oil and water, but still super friendly and, and part of the thing, uh, not enclavey, right? That, that that you're going to feel isolated, but that's intentional, right? That's the goal is to feel isolated. So if that's what you want, you can achieve that. But if you want to be here and have that connection, almost certainly the act of, of making that effort and the fact of having that desire are going to almost certainly guarantee success to some level, if not to an extreme level, because so many people are going to find you 
automatically interesting because there aren't that many expats. There aren't that many immigrants from those areas. And so you, you have this automatic leg up on, on random people because you're just different. And that gives you this, oh, well, I, I, talk to, I talk to people from down the street all the time. Who is this guy? That's a different person to talk to. Okay, cool, right? Because a lot of communities don't have a lot of strangers coming through. So when one does, it's kind of like, Years ago, I was in a pub in Stratford-upon-Avon, but not in the tourist area, like out at a little local towny pub. And I go in and we're just having a beer and hanging out. And all the people in the bar were like, you have an American accent. Why are you here? And just swarmed around me and had this huge group of people hanging out. Now, of course, we all spoke English, which made it super easy. But the fact that I had an American accent and was a tourist in this non-touristy area, it sounds like a touristy area, but totally isn't. And, and it just it immediately created all these connections, even in England, which is a place that gets a lot of Americans passing through. I was about as far from exotic as I could reasonably be while still being from another country. So that was really cool. When I was in Northern Ireland, just going into a bar and intentionally ordering a beer like I'm from Belfast immediately had the whole bar ready to hang out with me. And, and the same thing's gonna happen here in Nicaragua. Go out, get a Tonya, order a Flor de Cana, watch the, the Leones baseball team, go watch the Gigantes and Rivas, go watch a soccer game in Esteli with Real Esteli. Uh, and, and I told someone on my, uh, my audience recently, they're up in Esteli and they're like, what's there to do in Esteli? I'm like, oh my gosh, it's the Real Esteli game tonight. Go find a Real Esteli bar, watch the game, get some beers and hang out with the locals and just go crazy. And they're like, this was the best thing. They got Esteli scarves or whatever. And they're screaming with everyone. And like, it's huge and it's fun. And you do that. And instantly everyone's like, you're one of us now. And, and people will connect with you and you will make friends and be able to hang out and you'll get invited in. And the more you get invited in, it just becomes, it's such a welcoming, embracing place. Uh, even for those of us that you, you think, are they really going to be welcoming for me? As long as you have the attitude and the desire, I think you're practically guaranteed, I feel, <laughs> that you're going to have a very welcoming experience. I know of no one who didn't come with the intent of, of staying away who ended up with that kind of feeling. Of course, if you're gonna to go to San Juan del Sur, if you're gonna go stay in one of the enclaves, you're gonna stay in a gated expat community, then yes, there is a, a very high chance that you're gonna find that your interactions with Nicaraguans is just so little that having any amount of feeling welcome may not happen, but you're also not gonna feel not welcome. You're not gonna feel anything because you just don't have that interaction. But once you start having those interactions, you're gonna find very quickly. Um, and, and the same thing when I was in Montreal, that if you speak a little bit of French and you, and you get off the beaten path, you're not an obvious tourist and you're definitely making a little bit of an effort and you're definitely interested in the place. Everyone's like, this is cool. You, you want to know more about us. You want to have something to do with us. Instantly super welcoming in a place that's famous for not being super welcoming. Here, where it's pretty well known for being really welcoming, you put in that effort and it's just, you are just invited in with open arms and uh, easily, if, if it's what you want to be, becoming a really connected member of society who is able to make friends and, and have close connections and feel like you have a new family uh, and participate in things and be welcome in things and be invited places and just know that you are welcome from all levels of society, official and personal. Nicaragua has that. And, and I, it's just, I think that's really important. It was a great question because so many people, for really good reasons, question, would they really want me. They're not, they're not just going to put up with me for some reason. They're not just, I'm not like a loophole. I'm not sneaking in. I'm not going to get in and, and they're going to be like, oh, why is this guy here? I wish he would leave. No, that is not what's going to happen. Come here with good intents and good embracing things are going to happen. Every time you hear about someone who, you know, had to suddenly leave the country and go to Costa Rica to run their new business, right? You look into it and it's like, oh, they were, they were scamming someone. They were trying to take advantage of people. They had no interest in Nicaragua whatsoever. They only hung out with expats and only to try to get money from those expats. Like it becomes really obvious. Oh, of course they weren't welcome. They weren't welcomed by the expat community either, right? It, it's, it becomes clear that those who are putting in the effort, uh, you know, and it's not just in your local community. I can go anywhere in Nicaragua. I can be in Managua. I can be in Hinotega. I can be in Rivas. I can be anywhere. 
and putting in the effort to speak Spanish and putting in the effort to get to know a shop, to get to know a restaurant, to get off the beaten path, to talk to someone, just talk to someone, just do anything except for be on a tourist, you know, tour. And everyone's just like, wow, cool. It's great that you're here. You're welcome to be a part of society. Uh, so yeah, don't fear that. That is, uh, but it's, but it's a, it's a good thing to, to question. Um, but look at the, look at the policies, look at the laws, Nicaragua, wants you here and if you really look at the economy and look at the way that things work and look at who selects to come here you know the average person is not just jumping on a plane and coming to nicaragua while they should probably they're not and so the people who are coming here currently are such a tiny niche such a self-selecting tiny group of of potential immigrants that are coming down and saying i'm willing to to overlook all the propaganda. I'm willing to overlook all the pressure from my State Department. I'm willing to overlook all the naysayers from my family who are jealous and are trying to convince me not to get a better life. All the all the, that stuff. And say, I'm going to go investigate this for myself because I'm really interested. I'm willing to learn more. And of course, most people coming to Nicaragua do more research before they come than say people who go to Costa Rica. People who go to Costa Rica go, where should I go? Costa Rica, I heard about that in an ad. I'm on my way, right? Costa Rica is a great place. But the average person going there knows nothing about it and cares nothing about it. And so the reaction of society to expats there is going to be very different. But the average person, by far the, you know, the majority, coming to Nicaragua outside of the enclaves has put in some amount of research and is open-minded and is willing to explore. They want to connect. They want to get to know people. And so Nicaragua's interaction with expats has been very different than the, you know, the way that France or Thailand or Costa Rica interface with hordes of tourists. Nicaragua doesn't have hordes of tourists. They have isolated, self-selecting tourists who are often much more interesting and much more interested in being a part of things. So when Nicaraguans invite them in and say, wow, these are people who honestly want to get to know us and honestly want to be friends and honestly want to be a part of society, well, they like that. That's a great thing. When have you ever had a new neighbor show up who's all like, I want to be part of this awesome circle, throw a block party and have some beers. And you're like, whoa, block party and beers, dude. It's not what we do around here. No, you're like, sweet, new neighbor to hang, right? Like, of course. So that's the same thing. Nicaragua's like, wow, new people who want to hang and have some Tonyas? Let's do this, right? And so that's that's what's happening. And that's why they feel that way. And it's also important to understand because Americans have a tendency uh, to have because of the way that the government presents things, we tend to think of people as representing the country that they came from or going to a country represents a, a, a representation of something much bigger that it is not. People are individuals and Nicaraguans have this very individual look at people. Oh, where are you from? Where you're from tells us almost nothing about you, but it's interesting because then we know what passport you, you carry and what airport you can use. But other than that, the fact that you're American, Canadian, German, British, doesn't matter very much. It gives them a talking point, so it's easier to have a conversation, but it, they don't care because you are not a representative of that country. You do not carry the weight of decisions of that country. And so no matter where you're from, Nicaragua is like, why would where you're from dictate how we feel about you as an individual? Your actions as an individual need to dictate that. And you feel that from individual people, not just at a government level, but at a, at a personal level, that they do not hold individuals under uh, situations that I've seen in any way accountable for the actions of something they don't control that they, they really, chances are, have nothing to do with. It is worth noting, I have on the community, as many of you know, we have a number of trolls, we have a number of naysayers on the community. Some people have some really nasty comments from time to time. Not, not that much, it's really not that bad, but it does happen. And there have been a number of times that someone claims to be Nicaraguan living in Nicaragua and they, you know, have the Yankee get out kind of thing and the anti, maybe not anti-American, but anti-immigrant, anti-tourist, anti-expat um, feeling. But it, it's really worth noting that one, you expect that in any population, some amount of people are going to have that. But here in Nicaragua, one, I've never experienced that in person or in any online interaction where I had any reason to believe that the person was actually Nicaraguan or in Nicaragua. That doesn't mean that they are not, but it does mean, as you should know, that if you cannot identify a person online, chances are they're not who they say they are. It's very easy if you have an agenda to simply say you're anyone from anywhere. And then, 
you know, the catfish effect works really well. People go, well, why would they lie? Well, why would they tell the truth? Humans lie very easily. And when you're online and you're anonymous and you've made a point of keeping yourself anonymous, you have to assume that it's not for honest per purposes. If you're being honest, in most cases, you want to be known online because you want your identity to carry some integrity so that what you say has value. But when you're anonymous, what you say has very little value. You may be able to provide an important point. Oh, I don't know the word for this. Oh, the word for that is banano. Ah, it's banano. I don't need to verify if that person's real. Now I know what word to look up and I can verify it very easily. I don't care if that person is a bot or not. I don't care if it's really a person from Nicaragua or a person from outer space. It doesn't matter. They provided me with information. But if they're making a claim that we need to verify or they're making an opinion and they're trying to say it's the opinion of a certain group of people, if they're hiding with anonymity, assume you, you start with, there's very little chance that they're from that group of people. It is very little chance that they are who they say they are, because why would they be? It doesn't make sense. If they really wanted to convey an opinion such as that, they would want you to have enough that you could reasonably sus suppose that they're actually Nicaraguan from Nicaragua. No one who is visibly Nicaraguan from Nicaragua has ever even posted something negative in that way. There's been negative things, but not negative in that way. Someone gave me a really negative comment the other day about saying Nicaragua was really violent. And I'm like, I think you didn't watch the video, but thank you for your passion. But uh, I didn't say what you think I said. You clearly didn't watch the video. I don't know what they responded, but it was very funny that they're like making my point, but really angrily at me. I'm like, yes, that is the point I was making. Why are you yelling at me? I don't understand. Um, but beyond that, of actually being like, we don't want you here. No, I've never had that feeling in any way. So, and when you're reading my comments, when you see that, don't let it register in your mind. Oh, there's Nicaraguans who don't want me there. Of course, there's somebody who doesn't want you here. That's always going to be the case. But think, oh, it's about 90% certain on any given person. That's someone who's not in Nicaragua, maybe a Nicaraguan that's not here but abroad, maybe not a Nicaraguan at all, maybe an expat that just wants to keep the house prices down. I've seen people say that. Um, all kinds of things. Assume it's someone with an agenda that can't expose who they really are or it would water down or destroy their message and they're trying to do whatever's best for them or they just don't like you, whatever. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe if you'd like to help support the channel and the work that we do here. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. It comes directly to me and helps me buy, pay for the, the cameras and the editing equipment and all that stuff that we have to have to do the show and all the time that we put into it, of course. And if you would be so kind as to share on social media, uh, post it on the, the Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, those types of services, that does a lot to get the word out about the show uh, and, and broadens our audience. And the broader the audience, the more feedback we get and the more what we we do helps people. Uh, and of course, if you could tell friends and family, you know, get someone you physically know as a real person uh, involved and be like, hey, there's really interesting stuff going on. You should watch this show at least from time to time, if not every day, but every day is definitely better. And once we bring up the final four videos at the end, if you could click on one of those, that would be fantastic. I know we miss them a lot. It's really hard because of the way that YouTube works to reliably get those up. I'm trying to improve. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you all tomorrow. And now it's time for those four videos. What are the chances? Low, but I'm gonna do my best. And if you see them, please click. If you don't see them, just go on to one of the other videos that pops up one way or another on YouTube or find one of my other videos or Nicaragua 360 or Drive Warp and watch one of those. Thank you so much.